Now, of course, today is kingdom business, and but the kingdom business today is a little bit different because what I'm going to give you is different topics. The Holy Spirit gave me. If you notice, the title says "Kingdom Business Attacks." <clears throat> kingdom business attacks are the different types of attacks we go through in day-to-day -day life. And I, I'm going to start with a few things. The, the way this title came to me today was the past couple of days. I'm going to start with some things that Sister Anita, Sister Anita gave us some uh, some statements of yesterday or the day before of some challenges she was facing where she is right now. And we didn't get, I didn't get to address them because she had a series of questions. Uh, and I think they came up as she was reflecting on how to deal with that situation where she is right now. But because I was in the lesson that I was teaching, I couldn't really answer them. And that's what I do sometimes on Kingdom Business. If I see questions someone's dealing with or trying to figure out something, I write them down so when we get to Kingdom Business, we can talk about it. Now, I'm gonna go through those comments in a minute, but what the different areas we're talking about today and when I go to each area, we're covering five different areas. Can you believe it? We don't have 10 areas. We have five. <laughs> Holy Spirit's been giving me everything in 10. But today we're talking about five areas of attack. We're talking about family, friends, uh, finances, our freedom to live the way we want, and the attacks on our mind. Those are five areas of attacks we're talking about today in different ways. And, and I'm going to have you, as I get to each topic, share different types of attacks that you've gone through and how you faced it. And we, I got several scriptures uh, that I have, but this is where we share scriptures with each other on how what scriptures are strong to us. So we're talking about family, friends, finances, freedom, and attacks on our mind. And of course, of course, the answer to, like I said before, the answer to almost everything we're going to talk about today always comes by always comes by 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 uh there's one verse one verse will solve everything we're talking about thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him see all the attacks we face no matter what area we just talked about and there are other areas their co-workers their their other uh, memories i mean we got all kinds of things we're going to talk about that that aren't in these five but every single attack is about stealing our joy. Like I always talk about, I say this every single day, every single attack is about stealing our joy. Because if they look, and I say this every day to remind you, if the devil can steal our joy, remember the joy of the Lord is our strength. If he can steal our joy, we start getting weak. Because what? Weak, faith takes work. Faith takes energy. People say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble holding on. I'm trying to have faith. Why? Because your faith is getting weak. Why is your faith weak? Because the devil started stealing your joy. If he steals your joy, you have, you have trouble holding on, holding on to believing in what you're praying for. I'm trying to hold on. And if you lose your faith, there goes your hope. The hope that you'll ever get out of the situation you're going through. And see, that's how they're all tied together. It all starts with the attack on the peace of mind. Because you have no joy if your peace of mind is rattled. So he attacks our peace of mind, which then affects our joy. The joy affects our faith. And the, effects, the faith affects whether we will ever believe that our life can change the reality we're going through right now. If you're going through hard times, it's not meant to be forever. But the, the, the lie from the devil is to make us think the hard time we're going through is our permanent reality. Uh -uh. Uh -huh. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In due season, you will reap if you faint not. I mean, the devil's a liar. He wants us to think the negative reality we're going through right now is our permanent reality. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. I'm a child of God and nothing shall by any means hurt me. So whatever I'm going through right now, it's not meant to be forever. It's a season, sometimes it's a test, sometimes it's out of rebellion, sometimes we're being stubborn. All the different things that we're going through in life sometimes are, 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 are different reasons. And that's why we have to have pray. Many times we're praying for, for, for just a revelation to understand what is it, Lord, that why, why am I going through this season right now? And sometimes if you don't stop to ask that question, you won't get the answer because you just be going through hard times, not understanding why am I going through hard times? Don't ask yourself, ask the Lord, 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 show me, is this a test? Uh, am I supposed to be blessing somebody right now? Uh, uh, am I being tested right now? Lord, just give me strength, Lord, to make it through these times. And sometimes you get an answer right away. Sometimes the answer comes through, sometimes the answer comes through somebody else who validates what you heard in the spirit. See, the, the Holy Spirit, that's why we got to stand still. If you don't stand still, 
you don't hear anything from the Holy Spirit because the world is making too much noise. If you're stressed out, if you go into panic, if you're going through all kinds of adversity and you go into stress mode, you cannot hear a single thing the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit says, stay calm. I got this. Stay calm. So we remember with every temptation, he never puts us through any temptation without a way of escape. So if you're going through a hard time, there's a way of escape that you will see only if you stand still. If you don't stand still, you'll never hear or see the guidance the Holy Spirit's trying to tell you where to go next while you're going through it. We all go through it. Everybody can hear my voice. We go through it. Now, somebody says, I never go through it. You're alive. <laughs> That's a lie from the pit of hell. Everybody goes through it. No matter what level, you can be rich, poor, in between. Everybody goes through something in, in accordance with whatever level their life is on. So we just keep holding on God's unchanging hand. That's why I keep saying, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because no matter what level we're going through, what level of challenge, whatever the tack is, he's going to pull us through it. If we don't let go, meaning don't give up on the Lord, don't give up walk by faith not by sight don't look at how things are going don't look at how it seems second Corinthians 4 18 look not at things that are seen but things that are unseen because the things we see right now they're about to be changed to things that are unseen that are eternal so this stuff we're going through right now is just a season and and every season is not meant to last forever amen so that's why we keep holding on thank you sophia knee shift <laughs> thank you thank you thank you uh, i keep forgetting to move my leg i get up walking like a like a broken legged man thank you lord so that's what we got to hold on every season is a season just for that now the one thing i wanted to i did want to share and sister jonna helped me realize this uh and when when sister erica was earlier praying for healing from ptsd uh and, I, and when you hear me pray pray for all those who are dealing with ptsd who are not just war veterans but life can cause ptsd post-traumatic what is post-traumatic syndrome post-trauma what about what post-traumatic syndrome get give me the i always forget i'm so used to saying it i forget what it's meant to me ptsd post-traumatic syndrome i believe it is and so what it is is when you've gone through any kind of trauma thank you oh no, this disorder that's what i'm forgetting post-traumatic stress disorder when you've gone through any kind of stress in your life and most of the times we're talking about traumatic hurt in the past that can be as devastating like we talk about if you've been if you've been hurt uh, church hurt family hurt and it's been going for years that's still ptsd because if you haven't gotten over it that is post-traumatic stress that you're dealing with trying to let it go uh what 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 i didn't realize when i was going through right after the surgery the sister john had brought it to me because i never thought about it she was saying well look at it you you go because uh, sometimes i would i would i thought i was going to heal faster and sometimes because my body was only healing a certain speed i would just go i would, I would get stressed out because I, my body is not healing as fast as i wanted it to and i'd go into an emotional breakdown just what's 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 going on how come i'm not healed what's going on and i'd go into this emotional breakdown and 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 she said you know what's going on right you got PTSD. I said, what do you mean? I don't have PTSD. Those, those war, war, war victims have PTSD. She said, no. And, and a friend of hers in her acting class told her this, that when you're going through any kind of trauma, she said, look, your knee is a new knee. You don't have the knee you were born with. You have an artificial knee now. That's not what you were born with. So your body's got to get used to it. So just like a war victim who gets their leg blown in pieces has to get over the pain. And if you've gone through a mental, emotional pain that's hurt you so bad to the core that you've been remembering it for 50 years, that's PTSD. See, that's so PTSD happens anytime you're traumatically taken out of here in, in 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 any kind of way emotionally as a kid even as adults you backstab betrayed hurt to the core whenever you're hurt to the core as a traumatic event and what how you deal with it if you can't let it go afterwards that's ptsd post-traumatic stress you you've been hurt so bad that you're dealing with it depression anxiety all that amen now now um the, the amen, Marion, that's exactly right. Uh, several of you we've prayed for when you've got a long-term hurt that you're having trouble letting go of, 
that's part of PST, PTSD. And it's, you got to work your way through it. It's not an easy fix, as we always say. We, we're living this thing. And we're living this thing of just holding on to God's unchanging hand. And that's why we hold on to God's hand. Because we keep we just keep praying to be, be delivered. Keep looking at the Lord. Don't look at the situation. The situation happened. You cannot forget the situation because the situation is a reality in your past that really happened. So we got to deal with it by just have praying to the Lord every day, claiming victory. Help me through this, Lord. Give me strength to hold on, Lord. Help, help me not help me not give up, Lord. Amen. Severe burnout, exactly right. That's why we have to hold on to God's unchanging hand because we get tired. Physically, we get tired. And why do we get tired? If we don't keep feeding our joy, as soon as we stop praising God, keeping our eyes on the Lord, keeping our minds stayed on Him, that's what gives us the strength to keep pushing through what we're trying to be victorious over. That's why we got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. That's why you hear me say that all the time. We got to hold on to God's unchanging hand to help us make it through. Help us make it through because we physically do get tired. How long? How long, Lord? How long I got to go? How I got to go through this, Lord? How long? And that's why I try to make you say, remember, don't, don't get into saying how long because once you start saying how long, you'll start timing God. And now you get frustrated because how come God hadn't blessed me yet? How come God hadn't answered my prayer yet? What's going on, Lord? What's going on? When you get impatient with the Lord, you feed your own frustration because we've got no control over when God moves in our life. We just got to trust him and know that he's going to move. And in due season, we will reap if we faint not. We will reap if we faint not. Um, uh, Anita said, losing my kids, losing my uh, brother to violence. Becoming homeless, losing your life as you knew it has been ripped off out of your element. Amen. Amen, Anita. See, that's 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 the kind that's PTSD. So what you're going through, Anita, is definitely PTSD. What you just said, uh, Marion shared with what her situation was, and several others have. Uh, uh, Julie Pepsi, uh, who's dealing with a mission uh, situation as well. See, these are things that that when your reality has completely changed. There was a time when Sister JD, she was on, and she was betrayed by a church lady. A church member uh, caused her to be evicted and lost everything she had. And this was somebody in the church. So that was a combination of church hurt and losing everything you got. And, and so, so when we get devastated, we got two choices. We either give up or we hold on to God's unchanging hand. Two choices. When you're at the bottom of the barrel, you got two choices. Either you hold on to God's hand or, you, or the devil's going to take you out of here. And that's the only choice you got. And I'd rather just say, Lord, I'm going to hold on to your hand, Lord. I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to do it. I'm just going to trust you. And remember, it always comes back to trusting. Because when we don't understand, uh, people don't understand how, oh, yeah, how it, bring, uh, how it affects your brain. Oh, yeah, because see, depression, our brain releases chemicals depending on what we're focusing on. The different different hormones our brain releases. Just like when, you're, when you get excited, your brain releases adrenaline and you get stronger for that emergency but when you get depressed and stressed cortisol which works against your body i always share this before cortisol is a stress hormone released when you're stressed and that makes things worse if you try to lose weight and you're stressed out you won't lose weight because cortisol your brain releases and it keeps you from losing weight and now you get more depressed because you're eating right you're exercising but if you're stressed out the cortisol that your, your brain is reacting to stress that is keeping uh, serotonin yeah all those all the serotonin all the uh, uh, all the different things that brain reacts to how we're feeling and that's why we've got to focus on keeping our mind under control see our mind is what governs what our brain will release our mental state is what's controlling what hormones our brain releases so even if, if we can fight to stay in a state of peace of mind that's why we always say Hold on his unchanging hand, thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing you do. Uh Snurk said, uh, that was your your 20 year old your 20 year old self, Snurks. Oh yeah. See, that's what we gotta do now. So 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 of course, like I said, the text for the day, before we go into these areas, the text for the day is of course, I don't even have to say it. Isaiah 26, 3. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Because every attack we're talking about today attacks your mind first. And what your mind does determines what happens to your joy, what happens to your faith, what happens to your walk, what happens to your peace, 
all they're connected so this is all about keeping our minds stayed on the Lord is the answer to everything we're talking about today now what I'm gonna start with is some statements that Anita said the other day because she was going through, she was kind of typing she was kind of typing how she was feeling that particular day with the struggles she was having and let me just uh, me for, for, uh, share a few uh, there was a thing where Anita was was having trouble understanding her situation and why am I here and why am I going from shelter to shelter and, and I don't understand and, and then in, in the midst uh, Anita when you were saying that Holy Spirit was sharing with me there was one thing you said after you said I don't understand why I'm struggling I don't understand, I don't understand. when we get in a, a space of I don't understand why I'm going through something that's when we have to stand still the longest with the Lord because he will reveal whether you're being tested whether someone is at one of those shelters you're supposed to be a blessing if god is trying to train you to be a blessing during hard times let's just say that i, I don't know if that's it but i'm giving you an example because i've seen this apply to me if if your test is to be a blessing during hard times and during hard times all you're doing is complaining and not not using the the frustration to be a blessing to others god will keep you in the in this test until you learn to be a blessing during the hard times if that's that could be the lesson that i don't see that's what it's for you i'm just giving you exam, an example of how god uses us to, in order to strengthen us more he'll put us in a situation until we learn the test the answer to the test in this case is to be a blessing to others during hard times and that's the one of the hardest things to do. You're going through it. You're being beaten down. You don't understand what's going on in your life. Like you just said, all the things you just lost. What's going on, God? I don't understand it. The Holy, and Holy, Holy Spirit's trying to say, I need you to be stronger. I need you to be stronger. Now, what you do when you don't know what else to do, like, this, like the word says, stand. When you don't know what else to do is stand, that means we got to feed our spirit because our spirit is under attack. If our spirit gives up, our body follows, and then we go into depression, anxiety attacks, insomnia, high blood pressure, stress, all the other stuff we talked about. That's why the attack, you always see the, the, what, the book, I forgot, I'm thinking in Marilyn Hickey, The Battlefield of the Mind. The mind is what's under attack. Because if the, if the devil can get our mind, then our body will follow. Here comes the stress, negative thoughts, giving up, suicidal thoughts, ballistic, all that is the result if our mind comes off the Lord and we look at the world, we look at the situation, we start under, not, not understanding. Lean not to your own understanding. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. If you don't understand what's going on, Lord, I don't know what's going on. I just trust you, Lord. Whatever I'm going through right now, Lord, just show me what I'm supposed to do, Lord. Just guide me, Lord. Help me make it through this, Lord. I just trust you, Lord. I hold on to your unchanging hand. And that's a mindset you've got to go through when you're going through it the hardest and don't see any way out don't see what's going on we got to keep holding on and thank you joyce meyer's book the battlefield of the mind how our attack is on the mind i actually did a bible study uh the other bibles they called home at the word bible study 19 and 20 it's called control your mind and you can control all sin now that could also that also goes into control your mind and you control your peace of mind see our mind is under attack. That's the way, that's where the spiritual warfare takes place. It, we feel it in the world, but the main attack of spiritual warfare takes place in here, because that's where the attack is. If he can get our mind, how's the saying? Remember the saying where you say, "I'll do the clean version." Free your mind, and your body will follow. Whatever your body does, whatever your mind is doing, your body's going to follow. If your mind is following victory, you're going to walk in victory. If your mind gets depressed, you're going to walk depressed. Put your mind, you, as a man thinks, so he is. Now, let's talk about first. Now, one thing Nancy said, I mean, not Nancy, Anita. One thing you said, Anita, at the end of all the things you were saying, what you said, you said, I got, a, I got an opportunity to go somewhere else, but, but, but I, do, do I wait for the Lord? To get an answer whether i should go and the holy spirit said no wait a minute she's been, she's just been praying for for relief from this situation and then she just said but i have an opportunity to go somewhere else should i wait for the lord the holy spirit said that is the opportunity to get away from where you are right now now you said now but what if it, what if it's another shelter what if it's another shelter whatever reason god's moving you maybe this particular shelter right now 
is attacking your joy to the peace to the point where you're having trouble with hope and your faith so lord will move you to a different shelter and even if it's even if it's another shelter he'll move you to a better condition which helps you heal more and then he'll move you out so see the i uh the holy spirit was telling me when you said that yesterday Anita, that uh, i don't uh, you know what i'm talking about you said there's an opportunity for me to go somewhere else and and the holy spirit was saying that's the that's the that's the blessing he's trying to move her just like with sister nancy the other day she was praying for another facility we all know about the facility she was at it was mistreating her she was getting poor she was getting poor treatment and she prayed for a new new facility and a new facility came and the first thing she said is yeah but but i don't know if it's going to be able to provide for her mother and our own mind even with her her, her answered prayer of getting a new facility she went into panic saying, but I don't know. I don't know what to do because because I can't, I can't get to my mother. Now, she created a scenario before she even knew what the new facility did. And when she got to the new facility, the new facility provided transportation so her mother could easily get there. But she went into panic mode before she even got to the blessing. So sometimes we got to be careful that when we're in panic mode, God is trying to bless us with an answer, but we're in panic mode. And he's saying, I'm giving you an opportunity to move somewhere else. I, I, I'm trying to show you somewhere else. And, 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 and yeah, amen. And time, and that's, and that's what we hold on to because we don't know. We don't know what the answer is. And that's why we have to trust the Lord and lean not to our own understanding. Because not knowing, the, the doubt mode, yeah. When you don't automatically jump into doubt, you're not seeing the blessing God's given you. Now, of course, the, the first category we're talking about is the family issues the family issues of course uh, family issues is, is one of the one of the major hurts because you're not expecting to be hurt by family you're expecting to be hurt by the world but when you have family hurt it's like whoa wait a minute why what what my, my family's not speaking to me or my, I've had I've, I've prayed for several sons and daughters and, and, and sons and mothers who are not speaking to each other I mean uh, there are different types of family division going on and you're not expecting that but that's an attack that's an attack on the family to separate the family uh, uh now so, uh, those of you that you have to you don't have to share your exact situation but what are some of the scriptures you hold on to when you're going through a family dy dynamic of whether it's this division whether it's not speaking to each other or, or or jealousy i mean all these are different ways family can be torn apart by things in the world can come into the family and divide the family. Um, uh, Snurk said, I was just told that, oh, at your doctor's appointment? Uh, yes, Lord, thank you. Heartbroken? Yeah, yeah, see, heartbroken, when you're heartbroken, th thank you. Heartbroken is one of the, that's why we pray for brokenheartedness. Because anytime you're hurt by someone you don't expect to be hurt by, Family members or church hurt. That's what church hurt and family hurt are the two deeply rooted hurts that are hard to get over because you're hit by something you don't expect to be hit by family. You don't expect to be hit by church. So when you're hit by church hurt or family hurt, you're blindsided because you're expecting the world to hurt you, not family, not church. So when you get hit by surprise like that, you know, that throws you off. Uh, Tanya, I agree, uh, your son and your nephew, Oh yeah, oh, no, that's right. We're praying for your son, your nephew, the d d discord between uh, inner family, uh, brother and sister, uh, son and nephew, family members feuding, family members not speaking to each other, uh, uh, family members ostracizing other family members, not inviting them in or not inviting them or including them in the family circle. And so you end up feeling like you're abandoned. And, that, and that's why it's such a miracle, uh, uh, the, the praise report for Sister Marion, where she said that she's gonna have lunch with her brother after a year of not speaking, they're get they're, they're, the the first the first step of healing that Sister Marion was talking about that 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 she was able to make a, a lunch appointment with her, her her brother after not speaking for over a year, and that's a healing step. It may be a baby step, but it's still a step of healing. So you got to look at every single step as being a positive step toward healing, and that's why we we just hold on every every we keep a journal. Even even if this is a little step, that's a step towards healing, and we praise God for that. Uh, Julie Pepsi, uh, your brother did that years ago. You can't imagine uh, how your brother feels. 
Amen. Go back a little bit. Uh, Psalm 133, how good it is uh, for brothers to dwell in unity. Amen. Uh, I have one, uh, Joshua, Joshua 24, Joshua 24, 15. Uh, Joshua 24, 15. Uh, Joshua 24, 15. Now this is this is trying to get everybody in your family to, to praise the Lord. Uh, Joshua 24, 15. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of Amorites in whose land you are dwelling. But for me and my house, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, of course, that's for when you're when you're trying to keep when you're trying to keep the Lord in the midst of your family. You know, sometimes our, our young people get into doctrine, they, they get into cults, they get distracted. But but if it, but as long as they're living in this house, for me and my house, we serve the Lord. So and sometimes we have to say that to our young people, especially when they get old enough to think they want to bring some other doctrine into the house. I say, excuse me, uh, me me in this house, we serve the Lord. If you want to serve whatever you're serving, you need to go find your own place and live elsewhere because for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And sometimes you have to be that tough when family members want to bring in some false doctrine or they're not respecting the Lord in your presence and they know you love the Lord and they're not they're not respecting your love for the Lord by bringing in a false doctrine, by bringing sinful lifestyles into the house. You say, excuse me, you're out of line with the word of God in this house. We serve the Lord. So if you feel like you're that bad and you want to live in the world, you need to find, get your job, find your place and live there because this house serves the Lord. And as long as you're in this house, you will be serving the Lord. And sometimes we have to we have to bring that in. And we, at Amen's Cherry, we, we have to rebuke every false doctrine. We have to teach our young people what is a false doctrine because there's so many false doctrines that sound like Christianity until you realize they don't believe in the Trinity. You realize that they say praise God, but don't say Jesus. See, you're saying they're saying praise God, thank you, praise God, praise God but never say Jesus. That means they don't believe in the Trinity. And it can be that deceptive because you're thinking you're in the right place until you realize they never say Jesus because they don't believe in the Trinity, which means that's a false doctrine because in the, in the, for followers of Christ, we believe in the Trinity, amen? So these are all things um, that we protect our family. Also, uh, 1 Timothy 5, 1 Timothy 5, 8. 1 Timothy 5, 8. But if anyone does not provide for his own, especially for those in his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. This, this shows how the word takes very serious family relationships. If anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those in his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So when you don't take care of family and you don't, don't take you don't take the time to try to heal family, the word says you're worse than an unbeliever because because family love should be in the center of family. But as we know, this is not a perfect world, and the the world is tearing families apart left and right. So these are things of of what we're shooting for in the actual healing process. And then of course, uh, and then friends, friends. Attacks from my friends. Now, how many people, uh, I, 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 by by show of, amen. How many people have been betrayed by friends in some way, whether it's lying, whether it's backstabbers, gossiping, uh, you know, people who you thought were your friend, and then you find out, <laughs> you find out that wait a minute, you you, you find out that wait a minute, I thought I, I thought I thought I could trust you, amen. Amen. So, so friends, when you first meet a friend, uh, Amen. Uh, and, and see, we gotta, we gotta let like, like what I was sharing with Mary. Uh, thank you. When I was sharing with Mary the other day, when she met the young man that she met on the, she met on the trip, and even though he came from a lineage of pastors, I don't know if she said he's a pastor, but it's a, it could be a potential relationship, or it might just be friendship. And what we have to make sure, like we talked about that day, when we said, when we said, wait on the Lord. Um, the attack sometimes can make us think the betrayal of a friend makes us think we can, we'll be betrayed again. <clears throat> but 
once you've been betrayed by one friend, you can easily go into paranoia that every friend will betray you. And that's what that's a life of the pit of hell. We got to make sure we got to make sure that we don't let the lies of the devil come in and, and bring that into into play. Amen. Because we've got to keep control over that. Uh, Jerry, uh, my ex friend who got into witchcraft, tried to tell us that Jesus helps her do which that Jesus helps her do witchcraft. But I heard her. I heard every lie. Amen. Says the spirit of discernment. That was a spirit of discernment, Sherry. That that when uh, whatever that was trying to be brought into your your that lie was brought into your, your presence, Sherry. You rebuked the name of Jesus because you knew the spirit of discernment told you that. Uh, uh, Snurks, you and your friends sacrificed for your cousins, raised them like your own children, and now you struggle with that. Amen. See, sometimes you do all that stuff for others, and you don't get appreciated. You feel like you got misused all those years. You gave your blood, sweat, and tears to help somebody, and they gave nothing back. And, and see, we're even though we're not supposed to expect anything back, it still hurts because you're thinking if it's family, especially if you're helping, if you're helping people through stuff, uh, you try to make that. Uh, uh, sweets me. Let me go back to uh, what's your question, sweets me. Uh, my family doesn't know what's going on. I don't want to be judged by them. They don't really like your husband. Well, see. Just uh, sometimes, sweet for me, sometimes when you're dealing with a struggle like that, it's best to just keep it vague. Well, well, well we're, we're working on it. We're, we're, we're dealing with some challenges right now. Because once you give family too much information, they all act like they become Dr. Phil and start telling you what you need to do. And sometimes when family gets in the middle of your, your, your family business, it can make matters worse. They tell you what you need to do when you need healing. You need a, a marriage counseling. Sometimes family members can jump in there, and I know, but he's leaving. It looks like he sees. That's right. He looks like he's leaving her because right now he's being governed by the drugs, the drugs life, and alcohol life. And see, and, and like I said, sometimes, and we don't know this. We don't know this answer yet. It may go to divorce, but if she goes to the to healing, family counseling for herself, uh, sweet for me, you must go to to marriage counseling for yourself first. Don't worry about the marriage yet. Worry about healing you first. Because even when you go into marriage counseling, they don't meet with both people first. They meet with the person who needs, who is seeking help first. Sometimes during the separation, sometimes during the separation, realization comes. It may or may not. We don't know yet. Sometimes during the separation period, the person who thinks they don't need you suddenly realizes what a gem they had once the relationship is over especially when kids are involved and then and sometimes that brings a willingness to come back together and of course if the stronghold is really strong i mean i, I have a, a a friend of mine which well, they're both friends the husband and wife they broke up because she was saved and he was not and she actually told him until you come to know the lord uh, this marriage is over so they broke up in their young life they came back together and tried to remarry but, but but he still wasn't healed yet and they divorced a second time and they met 20 years later they both loved the lord and got married a third time and now both of my pastors trying to teach how relationships have to have to be worked on and so so sometimes when when a, when family comes in and tries to give you too much therapy they can make matters worse uh tanya uh that's how it worked for sweet to me oh god had had you look at yourself, you did get a divorce, but God be the glory. Amen. 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 See, see, it, it, once, once you go into therapy for yourself, first of all, you get to find out if there's anything you did to, to add to it or it, it, you put into perspective exactly where everything happened as far as what role did you play. You may have played no role in it. It could be all on your spouse who did the separation, but you need to go into therapy just to get healing for yourself first and and, and, or, and th a marriage counselor or therapist will help you talk through things to bring realization into what you're talking about but that's all part of family now according let me say part of friends uh colossians 3 13 friends colossians 3 13 colossians 3 13 colossians 3 13 now this is what we should be doing as friends, as friends, 
Ozzy. Well, the way that Alice says, when people feel the love of Jesus uh, has for them, they change. Yeah, when, exactly right. That's why we got in the midst of all the uh, division. That's why we got to keep prayer going in the midst of all the division that's taking place, whether it's in marriages, families, or marriages, because the love of the Lord is what can kind of bring healing in every way. Uh, amen, amen uh, John, as, as long as she has the Lord, she's not bearing it alone. Amen. Amen. Come back up, John. See everybody in his apartment. Uh, Cherry, through our separation, the Lord has told you to work on your own flaws and focus on fixing those flaws on yourself, not your spouse. Remember, we can't change anybody. A lot of marriages, a lot of marriages will say, well, well, I, I see this wrong, I see that wrong, but when we get married, they'll change. Well, wait a minute, what if they don't change? You already saw something that was a red flag, but you assumed that once you get married, they would change. But that's a red flag, you need to find out if they will change. We cannot change another person. That person has to change change from within for themselves, amen? Um, Julie Pepps, I realized I was mean to men and didn't follow God. I didn't know I had to keep didn't know I had to keep it godly. <laughs> Amen, Julie Pepsi. That's a revelation. Amen. Uh, 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 Lucy said, "I I will learn. I'll be sixty soon. I, I've financially learned to say no." Amen. Uh, Colossians three uh, three thirteen, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, you should also also forgive. Just as the Lord forgave you, also you should forgive. And that's that's what we have to do with friendships. When friendships, whether it's betrayal, backstabbing, gossiping, like I shared before, when friendships or uh, betrayal take place, that's that can be hurting to a core as well. Especially if a friend betrayed your trust. You you thought you were telling secrets to each other. And even though you were telling secrets, your secrets weren't being kept between the two of you, they were being spread to other people. Uh, let me see. Um, I got to take my. I can. I can take my space back, not lose my blessings. Come on. Well, hey, Missy, because remember, remember, Julie, uh, Marion, when you go into meeting someone, if you're looking for a relationship and you meet somebody, that person may not be re looking for a relationship. Sometimes, what we're looking for is not what the other person's looking for, and we have to make sure that we don't pressure the other person because we're looking for a relationship, and they're not. They're looking for friendship. If one person is looking for friendship and the other person is looking for a relationship, that can put an unnecessary stress because the person that's not looking for a relationship may get intimidated and may pull away because they feel that they're being pressured. So when it, when you meet somebody the first time, just let it happen. Like I said earlier, thank you, Jonna. That's why we, we let a relationship happen. Let it happen as friendship. Remember, in every relationship, you got to be friends first. When you get married... You should be marrying your best friend. If you're just marrying for any other reason and you don't know them as a friend, that's where surprises come out. If you are friends first and then it becomes a relationship and then moves to marriage, you are friends first. If you can't be friends first, that that is what can pull a stopper on the relationship. A amen. You gotta wait. Patience is the key. And an anxiety into a relationship can be the one thing that kills the relationship. Because the person who wants only a friendship will feel the anxiety of the person who wants a relationship. And that's what will, what could put that uh, in danger. Amen. Okay, then, of course, the other thing, uh, I know I'm trying to keep it short. Uh, finances, of course. Finances. Finances is one of the main things that can pull people apart. Finances in marriage. Finances when you're just trying to make ends meet. Those are attacks. Because, see, remember... When this whole world is money based, everything in this world is about money. And so when we get into money issues, when we're talking about money, now we're talking about issues that that is pulling at us because we don't have what this world the world says you need money to survive. But if you don't have enough money to survive, the stronghold makes you think you're not gonna make it. And that's see all these things come on, a uh, God should supply my need. Uh, my God should supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Because finances, our finances, sometimes God is blessing us through manna blessings. Through manna blessings. 
Okay, we're on a different topic now. You guys still talking about relationship. We're on number three now. We're on finances. Uh, if you want to continue the conversation about relationship, Marion, uh, do that offline under the uh, video. Under the video. Yes, before I know this, I knew whenever see that's a danger kingdom business. Once we hit a nerve, we get off target. So that's why I normally don't do kingdom business because once I hit a nerve on certain issues, people go off and can't let go of things. So any any issue that's a long term issue, either get each other's email or put it under the video box where people can leave a comment back and forth on the archives and that allows us to stay on point because I only got a couple hours to go through all these things. Amen. Because because when, when once we get distracted and we go all directions, everybody's attention is being focused and I end up having to delete every comment that is distracted. So what I do after every comment, every lesson, I go through the entire archives and any comments that are off point, I have to delete all the comments to keep everybody on point with what's being talked about. We're talking about finances right now. Finances is one of the major things that can break a relationship up, that can break up relationships, that breaks up families, attack on your finances. And we still, even in the midst of an attack on our finances, we got to make sure we still hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because sometimes he's blessing us with favor. Sometimes he blesses us with just enough of what you need for that day. Sometimes we think the only thing, we think the only thing that we can do to be delivered is a huge financial breakthrough when God is blessing you with just what you need for that day. Sometimes the blessing comes one day at a time. We get so fixed that I need a financial breakthrough. I need a big chunk right now. But God is giving you a big chunk one day at a time. That's what we call manna from heaven. Like in the Old Testament, God gave the people when they're in the wilderness, he gave them just what they needed that day. He did give them a feast. He gave them what they needed to eat one day at a time. And sometimes we miss God blessing us one day at a time because we're looking so much for a big breakthrough at once, like a lottery or a supernatural humongous breakthrough. We miss the daily blessings God has given us to make it through until we get to the major breakthrough. See, we don't know God's timing of any of this. That's why we just we keep we keep our mind focused on Him, and we keep when we keep our mind focused on the Lord. That's when we see that God is blessing you day by day through favor, favor on the job, unexpected income, uh, 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 supernatural uh, favor that you don't even understand why something happened. It's the favor of the Lord. And that's how when we sing the song, you save me, Lord, he can save us in so many ways beyond what we can think. Remember, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing uh, now to him who uh, now who uh, now to him who's able to exceedingly uh, and, and abundantly bless us beyond our, our imagination. He can bless us beyond our imagination because we can only see a certain way that God can bless us. But when we let go and just focus on the Lord, he can bless us in so many ways that we don't even know. That's why we have to trust him. Like we said earlier, we got to trust him to know he cares about everything we're going through. And as long as we're still trusting him, we're diligently seeking his face. And he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Amen. The, 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 uh, of course, the, the the verse for finances is Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. When we know that the God who is taking care of us, he shall supply all our need according to his riches, we don't get caught up in what we don't have. When we look at what we don't have, we get depressed. I don't have enough money. I don't have this. But wait a minute. It's not about, about your blessings. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches his riches and glory by christ jesus are unlimited that's where supernatural favor comes from financial breakthrough un unexpected income that comes from his riches and glory by christ jesus and that's why we have to hold on we have to hold on to that um and praise god um uh, amen amen uh, st stay, stay on task lori stay on the topic amen so that's finances freedom number four freedom we actually start talking about that in the beginning PTSD is attacking your freedom, your freedom to live a life of happiness and joy, the joy of the Lord and enjoy life. When you're fighting PTSD, you, you, you're fighting hurts from the past. Amen. And that's right. Thank you, Mike. Mike, who can outgive God? God is the eternal giver. He should provide what? Uh, remember, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. Remember the Lord your God, for it is he, not man, it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. And God watches us. 
he who is faithful in little is faithful in much. If you can't be trusted with a little money you have, God is not going to bless you with an abundance because you can't be trusted with a little you have. But if you only have a little bit and you're giving and you're donating and you're helping people with a little that you have, God says, wow, if he's a blessing with a little that he has, let me bless him abundantly because that means he can be blessed abundantly and will use the same way. Amen. And that's how the that's how God watches how how we use that. Praise God, praise God. I lost everybody. I lost everybody there for me. The devil is a liar. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I got to wait a little bit for everybody to come back. Uh, a phone call came in as I was making that last point. And that's why I say the timing of phone calls. And sometimes the people will. Well, that, that, that was definitely the devil trying to make a point. So I'm waiting for everybody to come back. I know uh, we got disconnected. We got completely kicked off that time. So I have to start a part two of this last part. So I'll wait for everybody to come back. Amen. Praise God. Wait for, this is part two. I have to wait for everybody to come back before I finish this point. Amen. 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 Give me a give me a praise God as you check in. So I know as you're checking in that you're back. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me turn the car back on. Get me in the drum. Amen. Amen. Lisa Martinez, welcome back. Got kicked off, Lisa. So we're waking back, we're back, amen, 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 in your face, in your face, praise, praise God. We got just a little bit more to cover, amen, amen, give me a praise God as you check in so I know you're back, amen. If I see, I see Sheila, um, Wanna see Lucy, Lisa, Lisa Martinez, Justine, amen, people come back, praise God. Sheila, Wanna Lucy, amen, amen, amen. Yeah, that, that was, that was my mistake because the phone call com comes in as, as whenever you see this the screen turn sideways that's someone calling Tanya back amen and when someone calls I try to disconnect the phone I accidentally said it says usually it says do you want to continue and I hit it to try to get back and it was saying do you want to end and I accidentally hit end instead of to continue welcome back Kelly amen amen Kelly spirited welcome Amen, amen. Praise God. Yes, Lord. So Lewis, welcome, Lewis. I didn't see you there, Lewis. Amen. Cheryl, Florida, Vanessa, Nelia. Amen. I'm waiting for kind of give everybody a chance to get back. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Because you know, as we were as we were just talking about freedom, we were talking about freedom, uh, freedom, our freedom is attacked, our freedom to live the way we want to live when our mind is attacked. And that's what we we're talking about as I was being dis uh, disrupted. Amen. Nelia, the show got back. Amen. Susan, praise God. Amen. I'll give everybody time, everybody time to get back. You yeah, can see the the topic as, as everybody comes back, I'm just continuing where the last one left off. We were talking about freedom. Your freedom to live life the way God wants you to live. And see, that's when PTSD is attacking us. Bad memories from the past. Uh, attacking on our lifestyle trying to keep us from moving forward and enjoying life the way it is Deanne she's back amen amen I'm uh, still holding on folks uh, checking back in and praise God so 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 the freedom to just enjoy life is threatened because when an attack is hitting us whether it's past hurt whether it's church hurt whether it's memories uh, our, our, our ability to know we can achieve what we're trying to achieve in life those are all attacking our freedom you have a goal that you want to work on and you got naysayers telling you your goal is too big or you'll you'll never make your goal see all those are attack on your freedom to to go after what you want to go after in life and, and just do what you want to do in life that's when your freedom is being attacked and see that's that's of the utmost important see all these remember I said earlier Anita, welcome back. Well, we're just kind of holding on to everybody. Your freedom is being attacked by sometimes friends, by naysayers. And that's why whenever you're working on something for yourself as a goal, don't share your goal with everybody. Because sometimes people who are jealous of your goal will try to keep you from reaching your goal because they don't have a goal. And they can be jealous of your goal and be naysayers trying to make you think your goal is ridiculous. You'll never be able to do that. How come you... You'll never be able to do that. And, that, and that's why we hold on. Uh, amen. Amen, uh, Kelly. Sister Kelly, Yeshua is our, our whole hope, 
our entire hope. Amen, amen. Wait a minute, see. I got, uh, well, praise God. I think since John is trying to reach me, make sure I'm not sure if I'm online or not. Hold up, hold up, there you there. Praise God, thank you, Lord. Praise God, amen. Yeah, so, so that, that, that's, that's what we're talking about in, uh, in protecting our freedom. And that's why we're saying before we were interrupted, um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The, the, the I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me is the verse for that stronghold. And and that's that's why I'm just trying to get through all them. Um it is it's just to to keep Amen. At least got the got the washing machine working. Amen. Freedom, no bondage, no more pain, no more suffering, no more obstacles, no mountains. That's why we hold on to God's unchanging hand. He's a mountain mover, the burden remover. All these things are attacking our mind, our goals, our life. That's these are attacks trying to make us give up and that's why we hold on and we hold on and don't give up and keep pushing and the last one of course the last one works in in, in concert with freedom your mind our mind is under attack and see when your freedom's under attack what's being attacked we talked about this at the very beginning as I get ready to close we talked about this at the very beginning your mind is what's under attack in everything we're doing because when your mind is under attack is affecting everything as a man thinks so he is if you're thinking that you're overwhelmed the reason you feel like giving up is you're looking so much at the situation that you're in more than god that that's what gives you the feeling of overwhelm overwhelm is caused by looking at the world more than you're looking at god no matter what the situation when you're looking at the situation more than you're looking at god who can deliver you from the situation that's an attack on your mind because the devil knows if he can free your mind remember see if he can steal your mind the body will follow if he can steal your hope steal your dreams steal your goals your motivation for your, your reason for living all the things that in your mind that keep us motivated to get up every day to work on something that's a drive we have if, if he can attack your mind and take away your drive and your reason for being motivated in life that's a that's an attack on your mind because he knows if he gets your mind he's got you and that's why we said first thou should keep him in perfect peace who's what whose mind is stayed on thee that's why we keep our mind stayed on the lord because the devil knows our mind is his number one attack if he can attack our mind he's got us and that's why i say control your mind you control all sin control your mind you control your peace of mind we our, our mind is under attack by the world the videos the music the the films television animation the world is in everything trying to distract us seduce us uh, uh cause confusion it's all an attack on our mind and that's why we got to keep holding on keep holding on to what it is we are working on in this life and whatever the goal is whatever it is you're working for in life to make it to whatever it is you don't let go of God's unchanging hand because he gave you the vision for what it is you're working for. He wouldn't give it to you if he's not going to make you get to it. But see, the devil makes you think that goal is too big. You'll never reach that goal. That dream, that's just a dream. You're not going to reach that dream. Like Tammy said earlier, she's got a big mission she's working on. She's praying to make it through that mission. The devil going to say, oh, you'll never make that mission. You don't know nobody. You got no money. You'll never do that. So that's a devil. That's a lie from the pit of hell we whatever god has planted in your spirit and that's why the devil tried to disconnect us this this is the biggest thing of this whole lesson whatever god has given us as a goal in life that is what he our, one of our main purposes for being here each one of us has a purpose that's why we sing the song you save me we're here for a purpose we're not just here by accident we're not on this fellowship by accident god is making each one of us a mighty warrior to be used somehow in the kingdom and whatever he's blessed you with as a goal whatever he's blessed you with as a gift he wants to use that because it's something you enjoy he wants to he wants to bless you with whatever you do well to be able to be used in his kingdom he doesn't put you in an area of expertise that you can't stand when you he, he gives you a blessing to be good at something whatever it is you're good at is how he wants to use you in the kingdom to be a blessing to others because you're blessing people as you enjoy doing what you do that's why our mind is attacked to make you think 
that you have no blessings, you have no gift, you have no way of blessing people. He wants to make you feel worthless so that you think you have no gift from God and God cannot use you. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That's all, that's all the attack, all the attack on the mind. And that's why we gotta keep feeding, <laughs> keep feeding our spirit, feeding our goals, whatever your goal is, work on it every day. You hear people say this all the time, whatever your goal is, Work on it a little bit at a time because that keeps re-energizing re you. It keeps you excited about what you're working on. Keep using your talent. Keep using your gift. Keep go keep doing that thing that God gave you that you do well, so that you can be a blessing to others. Because you're not the only, you you only able to do it well because it's your gift. Nobody else may have that gift, and that's why you have the gift. So you can see that, uh, Dan. Sometimes I can see people's lips moving and know they're talking to me, <laughs> but I'm not talking. To their negative talk amen dan amen see we always have a choice like we said uh, the, on the lesson about choices we always have a choice as to how we react to others whatever they're saying to us we don't have to drop down to their level and respond to negativity we be like the, like the eagle flying over the storm whatever negativity they're doing we're flying over the negativity we're not going to let their negativity come into our space because their space is trying to attack our joy remember when somebody goes off in, in your presence, they're trying to steal your joy. That's a slick way the devil tries to sneak your joy by having people say something to you, say something mean, say something that hurts you. They're trying to steal your joy. That's not by accident. You got the joy of the Lord in your strength. The devil gonna send somebody to try to take your joy by saying something insulting, maybe cursing, anything that he can do to try to steal your joy. Uh, how do you find out what your gift is? What normally, Susan, Whatever it is you do well is a, is a hint of your gift. For example, some people, uh, uh, Sister Jana, one of her gifts is she has the incredible gift of organization. I mean, she can look at somebody's problem and tell them how to solve their problem and it's their business. And she got in trouble a few times. They got jealous that she could tell them how to fix their business, but because it was their business, all of a sudden they start shutting her out. They, they hired her to fix the problem. She could tell them how to fix their problem without even looking, and they got jealous. So see, sometimes, Susan, what it is you do well, when somebody says, wow, you should do this for a living. Sometimes it's listening, sometimes it's working with your hands. Hey, JD, hey, welcome back. Uh, sometimes it's working with your hands, sometimes it's just talking to people, sometimes it's listening. I mean, I mean God gives each one of us a gift. And whatever it is you find that you do well, that you don't even understand why you do it well, you just you just do it well. That's a hint. That's that's a gift the Lord wants to use you somehow to be a blessing. And uh, Susan, I actually did a lesson uh, on one of my Bible studies. I think it's 34. How to discover your God-given talent and your divine purpose. I forgot the number. I just put in how to how to find your God-given purpose. Oh, your God-given talent and your divine purpose. And that's a Bible study. Uh, amen. Oh, 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 JD's birthday. So she gets a song before I go. Amen. You get a birthday song at the end, uh, JD. Amen. So that's why we, that's why we, that's why we hold on to all the things we're talking about and protect your mind. Now, I'm not going to go through all the scriptures. Uh, the, there's quite a few scriptures. The main thing for, the main thing, uh, the main thing for your mind is James, James 1, James 1, 13, 15. I'll now close on this. James 1, uh, James 1, 13 through 15. Uh, where'd you go, James? Uh, James 1. Let, now, this is the one about the mind. Uh, hey, Todd, uh, uh, James 1, 13 through 15. We know this well. And this is one of the ways our minds is attacked to try out. Let no one say he is tempted. I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil. He himself does not tempt. But each one is tempted when he is carried away by his own lust. And if I stay focused, I'm about to sing, I'm about to sing JD at the very end. If I stay focused, this last point, uh, James uh, 1, 13 to 15 let no one say, uh, well, excuse me, but each one is tempted when he's carried away and enticed by his own lust. And then when lust has conceived, 
it gives birth to sin. And when sin is conceived, it accomplishes death. Now that's talking about sin, but that also talks about how our minds attack. The, the most important part of that scripture is not, not about sin. The most important part of that scripture is each one is tempted when he's carried away and enticed by his own lust. Now, in this case, when your mind is attacked, then the attack is not just a lust. The attack is anything that can distract you from what it is you're working on. And see, that, that scripture is used mainly, mainly to talk about sin. But when your mind is attacked, the devil knows about things that we're just, what, we, what, what distracts us. The devil will put in our mind whatever he can to distract our purpose, to distract us from working on what we want. It'll be the spirit of procrastination. You're working on something, but I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. And the next thing you know, next thing you know, you never get it done because the spirit of pro procrastination is one of the devil's tools to keep you from ever reaching the goal you're trying to reach. And that's what the main, uh, main uh, goal is. We got to stay focused. We got to stay focused on what we're talking about because that's why we're here working on keeping our mind focused on him. And that's why we said that in the very beginning. Uh, you, you, you have that one, John? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's the main, and that's what that's what I'll close with. There's about there's about uh, uh, five six scriptures I'll also add that are about the mind, because remember Romans talks about it. I sin, but I, I don't understand why. Uh, as a man thinks, so he is. I mean, that's why we feed our, our our faith, starve our doubt. When you're feeding your faith, that's what's empowering you. That is what is empowering you, because when you're feeding your faith and starving your doubt. That's what's keeping you focused. Each one is tempted. Oh, thank you, Dan. Thank you. Uh, and and see, that's why all the word, the word of God is trying to make us through all the things we're talking about. The word of God is trying to make us feel that we're 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 we are worthy and can make everything we're doing. That's why the promises, God's promises, are promises, not theories. These aren't possible things. These are things that work in your life if we apply them. That's why I said he's given us authority to trample over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. That's why we hold on to God's unchanging hand. Starve the doubt. Starve the doubt. Feed your faith. Starve your doubt. Feed your spirit. Starve your flesh. That's the warfare we face every single day. The warfare is not carnal. It's not carnal. It's not about our flesh. It's about keeping us away from God. That's what every attack if you live, if you think about nothing else after this lesson, every attack we go through is trying to steal our our mind to take us off of everything we're praying for about whatever it is, whatever it is we're doing. That's what our main focus is about in terms of keeping our mind stayed on the Lord and staying focused. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the lesson, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the focus to be able to stay on God's word, Lord, and the purpose of the day, Lord, to keep our minds stayed on you, Lord, not by distractions, Lord, because we know the devil tries to distract us whenever the word of God comes forth, Lord. And we know, Lord, we know right now, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your unchanging hand, Lord, to move in every situation, all these attacks we talked about today, Lord. We know, Lord, that you're in the middle of everything we're going through right now. And we say thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord, for all the things that you're doing in each one of our lives, Lord. And we learn, we learn to remember that we walk in authority over every attack, no matter what the attack is, no matter what we talked about, whether it's family, friends, finances, freedom, or mind, whatever the attack, Lord, we know that the key, the number one key is to keep our mind stayed on you, Lord, and to trust you and lean not to our own understanding. That is the key that we must remember. That is the key to walking in victory over every situation we face. Because we know no matter what we go through, no matter how bad it gets, the devil's trying to steal our joy and our peace of mind. And once we can protect our peace of mind, once we can protect our peace of mind, the devil can't touch this. Don't, 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 can't touch this. That's right, go way, way, way my window. You can't not touch anything the devil has no kind of hold on us and that's what we got to remember 
in this due season as we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Father God, just touch every fellowship member right now, Lord, in the area of need as we get ready to go, Lord, to just continue to move through every fellowship member's life, Lord, to give them victory in every situation, no matter what area, Lord, no matter what the challenge, no matter what the adversity, no matter what the struggle, Lord, we know you're in the midst of every situation every fellowship member is going through right now, Lord. And we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy right now. Right now, I want to bind the spirit of retribution, revenge, retaliation for coming against any fellowship member because of your participation in this fellowship. And I bind every spirit of retribution, revenge, retaliation, and every other demonic spirit, named or unnamed, and cast you all out of our mind, out of our presence, out of our home, back to the pit of hell from which you came in the name of Jesus. And Father God, loose, oh yes, Lord, loose into the fellowship, unspeakable joy, peace beyond understanding, Lord. Oh yes, Lord, restore, restore, oh yeah, loose restoration. Restore every area of our life, Lord. We take back everything the devil has stolen, Lord. We take back our joy, our peace of mind, our zest for living, our health and well-being. We call those things that be not as though they were, Lord. And we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, lose supernatural healing and abundance, Lord. Lose supernatural healing and, and, and bring you by your stripes. We are healed and we speak healing over every infirmity, Lord. Anyone is dealing with long-term, short-term, Lord, we just say thank you, Lord, for our healing. By your stripes, we are healed. And Father God, loose supernatural overflow and abundance to all those who are facing any type of financial challenge, Lord. Oh, you used to supply all our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for answering our prayers, Lord. We thank you for moving in our life, Lord. We thank you for healing, provision, deliverance, breaking chains of addiction, Lord. We thank you for moving in this fellowship, Lord, in all the ways you're blessing people. Right now, we stand agreeing right now. If someone's been watching the past couple of hours and you don't know the Lord, we can never close without saying say this prayer with me right now if you don't know the lord and you've been just totally depressed and you need some love in your life say this prayer with me right now father god forgive me for the wrong i've done and the wrong i've been i believe that jesus died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead i want jesus to be lord and savior of my life and i commit right now i will not do a single thing in life i make a single decision in life without lifting it up to you first. In Jesus' name I pray. Create in me a clean heart, Lord, and remove from me anything and everything that is not like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen and amen. Praise God, thank you, Lord.